Hello guys, this is Adit. Welcome to my channel Movement Science, where I simplify biomechanics with Joe. So if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Also check me out on Instagram, where I post pictures of my notes and also put out some daily MCQs. The reference time for all the topics that I am going to cover will be mentioned down in the description. So check that out and let's get started. In this video, we are going to talk about the kinematics and kinetics of the thoracic spine. Last video, we covered the articulation and the structure of the thoracic spine, where we saw the facet orientation and how the movements were occurring. So we will further delve into the movements and also the forces that are acting on the thoracic spine. So starting with the upper thoracic spine, this region is from T1 to T6, whereas lower would fall somewhere from T9 to T12. So we will be discussing it under upper thoracic and lower thoracic. So flexion extension in upper thoracic region is limited due to the rigid rib cage, the ligaments like the posterior longitudinal ligament, ligamentum flavum and interspinous ligament which I mentioned in the previous videos and also the facet orientation because they are in the frontal plane right. See they are in the frontal plane so flexion extension movement over here will be difficult. Then extension movement is also limited by your spinous process again the spinous process posteriorly also the lamina facets and also the anterior longitudinal ligament and the abdominal muscles which are present on the anterior side you will want to do extension right and the muscles which are on the anterior side will resist that and also the capsule which is comparatively more taut than in the cervical region right so what are the movements that are possible? The lateral flexion and the rotation as we mentioned earlier has the highest range of motion in the thoracic region because of its facet orientation. And these are always coupled, correct? Lateral flexion and rotation are always coupled and these happen in the same direction. That means when the lateral flexion is happening, okay, lateral flexion is happening, the rotation will be happening in the same direction. Same as how we discussed in the cervical region, right? The lower cervical region, same thing was happening. The lateral flexion and rotation was happening in the same side. Now, in upper cervical, if you remember, it was happening in the opposite side. Now, that happens over here in the lower thoracic. So, upper cervical and lower thoracic are same and lower cervical and upper thoracic regions are same. That is, they are coupled motions or coupled movements happen in the same side that is for upper thoracic and lower cervical and for lower thoracic and upper cervical the coupled movements of rotation and lateral flexion happen in the opposite directions correct so that is another point you need to remember between upper and thoracic region then going ahead the lateral flexion and rotation is limited by your ribcage mobility we'll come to that over here in some time so we'll move on and we'll explore the other parts of the lower thoracic spine first so the rotation in the lower thoracic region is reduced and comparatively flexion and extension is increased now this happens because of the facet is in a sagittal plane as i mentioned from frontal plane the transition happens to sagittal plane because lumbar is proper sagittal plane right so the transition when it's happening the lower thoracic region has its facets arranged in more of a sagittal plane orientation because of which flexion extension movement increases because sagittal plane like right? this right and the rotation starts reducing the coupled movement point i already mentioned before so that's what is seen in the thoracic spine now going back to our ribcage mobility that i mentioned so this is the concept you need to understand that in thoracic region your thoracic spine ribs and lungs are connected as in the ribs mobility has direct influence on the mobility of your thoracic spine and your ability of your lungs to expand right so whenever you are working on the thoracic spine mobility you always need to work on the breathing exercises to expand the lungs you also need to work on rotation of the thoracic joint and also the mobility of the ribcage through expansion and through breathing right so this is a very important concept that you need to understand that in thoracic spine if you are talking about 
the rotation and lateral flexion component you need to consider the ribs and the lungs to improve the mobility okay so this is what i was mentioning the rib cage can limit the mobility at the thoracic spine now i have drawn this diagram i'll explain you guys what it is exactly so this is your vertebra imagine and on both sides of the vertebra there are your ribs correct like this and over here there will be sternum now what happens is when your vertebra rotates on left okay it rotates on the left the convexity of this rib will increase it will start becoming more and more convex over here like this because it is attached to the vertebra over here right and this one will start flattening out like this so this ability of your ribs to distort is very important for your mobility of the thoracic spine if it cannot distort like this what will happen is the thoracic vertebra won't be able to rotate and this will hamper the rotation movement in the thoracic region correct so that's what i mentioned over here the ribs on the ipsilateral side of the rotation they increase in convexity and the rotation range of motion depends on the ribs flexibility for or you can say ability to undergo distortion and also the range of motion at costo vertebral and also the costo transverse joint which i mentioned in the previous videos so what happens with age is as you start aging these joints they start ossifying and the range of motion at these joints is reduced which in turn reduce the rotation and other movements at the thoracic spine so the rotation range of motion highly depends on your ability of the ribs to undergo distortion and also the range of motion at costo vertebral and costo transverse joint right so that's all we have for the kinematics that is the movement at the thoracic spine going ahead to the kinetics the compressive forces at the thoracic joints are very high because it's a kyphotic curve right at the thoracic region we have a kyphotic curve which increases the compressive forces and also the upper limb weight is also added on so this increases your compressive forces at the thoracic spine and also the line of gravity if this is a kyphotic curve the line of gravity passes anteriorly to your vertebras or the spine right which again increases the flexion moment at the thoracic spine which again is countered this flexion moment which is produced excessive is countered by your posterior longitudinal ligament again i am i had mentioned this uh, that it is a very thick ligament in the thoracic region right that because it picks up these functions and also the spinal extensors are the ones which counteract all these flexion excessive flexion moment that are present at the thoracic spine so what you need to understand is thoracic spine always tends to go for more and more kyphosis because of its excessive flexion moment so whenever we see a patient we always need to remember that the extension at the thoracic spine is very important because our body tends to go for more of flexion in that area right so with that we finish off this topic what did we discuss we saw under kinematics that lateral flexion and rotation is high in the upper thoracic region whereas it starts reducing in the lower thoracic region because of the facet orientation from frontal to sagittal plane okay. then we saw how ribs play an important role the ability of the ribs to adapt and distort plays an important role for thoracic rotation and also how lungs ability to expand in the thoracic region is very much important then we also saw how the coupled movements of lateral flexion and rotation are opposite at upper and thoracic region and then finally we moved on to the kinetics where we saw that the kyphotic curve at the thoracic spine puts the line of gravity anteriorly which increases the flexion movement at the thoracic spine and increases a lot of compressive forces which can be counteracted by your posterior longitudinal ligament and all the spinal extensors so whenever we see a patient that's where our attention should go towards that he needs to get more of extension if there is more of kyphosis in the spine and we can do that by targeting lot of things right we can target the ribs the expansion of the lungs and also strengthening of the spinal extensors right and then we can combine all these and create different exercises and i will love to talk about these in the future videos so with that we finish off this topic 
That's all for today guys. Thank you for watching. If you like my video please share it with your friends. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and also like the video as it really helps me out. Also let me know in the comment section what other videos you would like me to cover and see you soon in the next video.